to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. Today, we are going to have another chat with my friend, Darla Powell. I love hanging out with Darla in real life and virtually any old way is fine with me. Darla was on the podcast episodes 203 and 330, where we talked about um, the first podcast, a major career pivot, the launch of her Miami-based Darla Powell Interiors. And in that episode, she told us about um, how her first portfolio was actually photos of her own home home that she decorated on a limited budget. Um, We also then did a follow-up episode a year and a half later when she was about to launch her social media company, Wingnut Social. And of course, she now has her podcast, Wingnut Social, right? Darla uh, has really just boiled down everything that she does in order to get all the message out about her company and her brand and her... um, how she attracts her clients and the tools and strategies that she uses to do it. And she pours it all into the podcast, Wingnut Social, and all into you if you work with her at Wingnut Social. But guess what? She's also pouring it into a chapter in my next book. That's right. Darla is a co-author in the third book, which is the second volume of A Well-Designed Business, The Power Talk Friday Experts. That's coming out in under a month, right? So Darla is really... Uh, social media guru. I love it. I love the way she blew up her social from the get-go and she hasn't stopped since. I'm so grateful that she is just fine sharing her wisdom with us so that we can try and duplicate this success. Okay. So now you know who else wants to be part of your success and support you in your business? Monogram. That's right. Monogram has a designer program that they created just for you. They want you to be able to understand the value of their luxury line of appliances from rages to ovens to wine fridges to dishwashers because they know when you know the ins and outs and the features and benefits of having high-end appliances, you are now the expert in the room. You can now confidently specify these items to your clients and your business benefits just like your clients do. All right. With everyone eating out far less than ever before, you know the luxury client is rethinking their kitchens. So Monogram is here to teach you how to be the expert in the room so that you can up-level your kitchen design. Go to monogram.com forward slash Luann. All right. I'm excited to talk to Darla. Hang on to your seats because here she comes. Hey, Darla, thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hey, Luann, how the hell are you? I'm so happy to be back. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you back. Like, there's on so many levels this pleases me. Um, first of all, <laughs> I'm just happy anytime I'm with you because you just make Aww. me laugh. <laughs> Aw, well, thank you. I am the same. I am always happy to be in your presence in the great light that is Luann Nagara. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, totally have to say, I... I say to you personally all the time that I have so many podcasts that I enjoy, but there's in the course of a week, the ones that I'm like non-negotiable, I've got to listen to, as opposed to really want to hear that show. It'll have to be next week or next month. Um, Yours is one that I always make time to listen to. I just love uh, what I love you and Natalie together. I think that it's such a, thank you. I really do. Of course, that's the week. The Wingnut Social Podcast. Exactly. The Wingnut <laughs> Social Podcast. Exactly. Um, I, I do Thank love so it. Much. I That's love what praise. you do. 
Yeah, I love what you do. I love the way you do it. And um, I always learn something and I'm always entertained. So um, if you are one of the two people living under a rock that hasn't heard of Darla's podcast, The Wingnut Social, you must, 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 must download it and subscribe. So, um, but the other thing that makes me so happy about you having you here, two other things is I have to just tell everybody, obviously, you are a co-author in the next Power Talk Friday Experts book, which is coming out in November of 2020. And Woo. you are uh, writing a nice, you've written a nice chapter uh, about social media and social media marketing, your g- genius there on, <laughs> you know, how it really does move the needle in our business. So yay to having you in the book. And I'm so glad. And then the last and final thing before we start talking that I want to say, which really pleases me about having you here is just thinking about what you have achieved in three short years? Is it three? It's just three years. A little over three, right? Three, what is this? This is August as we're recording this. So three years, five months. Yeah. Like, it's amazing. (laughs) It's amazing. There's people that are in business in a design firm or even like the, you've got two businesses that you've launched in three years and both are killing it. And, um, you know, look, I know I I have a little bit of a front row seat to your life. We're friends in real life. Um, And I know you work hard. I mean, that's, this is not like, hey, everything just falls in my lap. This is great life. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Like, I know that. Yeah. But still, it's remarkable. And so I know that I say that to you in real life, but I wanted to say it to you in public here that I really, really uh, do admire what you've created, the way that you've created, the work ethic that goes behind it, and of course, the intention and the information and the genius that you bring to it (laughs) is part of that success. Well, you know, Luann, thank you so much. And I would like to take a 100% claim for all of that. But I have the best team behind me that actually makes me look amazingly good. (laughs) So I I could not do it without them. I, I, I that means the world coming from you, because you know how much I adore and idolize you and I owe my getting into the interior design industry to your podcast. So full circle. I know. I just just got goosebumps. I really did. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and I've said the story before, but I remember you writing me when you were a a sergeant in Miami-Dade police and saying, I've been listening to your podcast and I think I can do this now. Like I, I, I didn't know that there was, you could do this as a living and make money at it. And I've been listening to it and I'm doing it. And I just sent in my resignation. I'm reading this email going, Whoa. (laughs) Did you be like, Oh my God, she just quit her job and she's going to blame me when this, when, when the poop hits the fan. (laughs) Right. Well, and the funny thing was, is I don't know if you remember, but you didn't tell me what your job was. That oh. I got surprised when I interviewed you seven months later. Do you remember? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't tell you. No, no yes. I don't actually. That you just said, I just gave in my notice. I feel like you wrote me in December and I feel like you said like February 1st, I'm out of here and I'm doing this, whatever the dates were. It was over the winter like that. And I remembered thinking, OMG, like, yay, lady, go get it. And then you know, here Darla Powell Interiors opens up and I'm not necessarily paying attention. I'm doing my thing, blah, blah, blah. And then if you remember, it was Mark that said to me, Mm -hmm. you know, Darla's killing it. And I'm like, yeah. "Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Darla's killing it. He's like, yeah, you know, Darla, Darla Powell Interiors. And I'm like, you know, I know a Darla. I don't know if it's Darla Powell and Tiri's. I said, I got an email from somebody named Darla like months ago. I went to Instagram and you had like 7,000 followers. I'm like, wait a second. (laughs) Wait a second. What happened? Yeah. It was like, I I just was, wait a second. And so then I said, okay, you have to come on the show and tell me how you went from, I think I'm going to start a new career as an interior designer in January to 7,000 followers in July. And (laughs) then on the show was when I found out that in fact, you were a, 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 a police officer. And so the the reason I say this story again, because I've said it often over the years on the show is because it really hammers home the expertise that you have a innately your your just nose for marketing and your nose for social media and your ability to intuit 
exactly what's important to craft a social media platform because when you go from zero to 7,000 in five or six months and then add to it what you've done in your own design firm the last several years and all of the additional work with clients and I'm sure reading and listening to podcasts, you know, this is what is the credibility factor of Wingnut Social to me. That is the absolute foundation and rock of why Somebody can count on Wingnut Social to deliver a good social media strategy and execute it for any creative. That's like, I mean, honestly, how could you debate it is my point. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. And I like to see that was one of the reasons why Natalie and I, my my wife and I created Wingnut Social was because when after my own social media marketing efforts started taking off, I started getting clients and I didn't have the time to do my own marketing. I reached out to delegate it to an agency, a very well-known agency, and they just didn't have the vernacular or the experience or or know what it took to market an interior design firm. It's different, right? It's a different business model and how you reach out to clients is there's a whole strategy behind it and when other interior designers started saying hey Darla what are you what the hell are you doing how are you so visible so far will you do my social media for us I said you know Natalie I think that there is a, a room in the market for social media for interior designers and two years later here we are I know I know and and so I just am like So the thing is, what we're going to do today is I would love for you to share a little bit of the insights of what you shared in the book. And of course, I'm not even worried about you sharing what's in the book. And because it's a, you still, you can hear it today on the show, and then you're going to need to read it again to really digest it. But I feel like you made such a great case in your chapter for the value of social media. And I know that even, you know, the designers that I speak to at live events and coaching, one of the things that a designer will often say to me is, do I really need to do Instagram? Like, do I really need to do this? And of course, I don't believe that everybody needs to. And I think it does start with what are your objectives? But I do agree with you that anybody who does it, if they do it well and do it properly, it will and can result in leads and potential clients, right? You know, absolutely. And, you know, when I first started doing the marketing for DPI, it took a, it took a hot minute. It probably didn't start getting DMs into my social for jobs until I maybe hit the eight to 10,000 follower mark. But now, after having done it and done it you know, pretty successfully for almost three and a half years, I get at least two good leads a month and, and one good project a month just from uh, DMs to my Instagram. So, but it's a curated little bit of a long game, right? It's not something that does happen overnight. And for the <clears throat> the designers who've been in the game for a while and most of their stuff is referral based, maybe you don't need to be on social. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be selling your business in a year or two or five and your your referral game is strong, maybe you don't. You don't need it. You know, I don't know everybody's business model is the same, but especially if you're a newer designer or if you really need to fill that pipeline or if you're planning on being in the game for, hell, I'll even say another five to 10 years. I know I just said five. Mm. I, I, it's imperative that you're on social. It's it's for the, for the large part free. And it's so impactful in building your brand and reaching out and building those relationships and letting clients know what it's like to work with you. It has been a 100% game changer for me. I have gotten so many opportunities to speak and so many opportunities like to be in your book for one thing and to be on your show for one thing and my podcast. And it's all been from social media marketing. It's just, it's absolutely been a game changer. If I hadn't been doing that and doing that in the correct way, you'd still be saying Darla who? Right. Well, it's so true, right? You would have been somebody who emailed me and, you know, talked to me about your experience of listening to the show and off into the sunset you go. But when you create um, something so significant in such a short amount of time, obviously the skill and like I said, the um, aptitude is there. And then to your point comes the recognition and the notice. It's like, oh, I got to go pay attention to that lady over there. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and I'm glad you did. Thank you. <laughs> right? So so the thing is, Darla, what do you find that 
I love that you just clarif- clarified that, that if you are many years in business, you're a seasoned designer, and maybe you do have a very high referral rate, because that, that makes me think of window works, right? So okay. window works, same thing, going on <clears throat> four decades and, you know, probably a 60 to 70 percent referral rate. When you, we look at our client base and with the in-house projects, 60 to 70 percent are either a repeat themselves or a f- friend of a, of a previous client, right? And so, mm-hmm. yeah, we, Window Works has a social media presence, but I'm... Um, you know, I'm not like looking to like break the, you know, the world record there on social media there because the phone is always ringing. And I know that we could do better. I know that there's um, um, room to bring more people through the pipeline through that. But to your point, is it the top thing that I need to spend my time doing? So, but beyond that, for the designer that's listening and is saying, okay, but I am only in business under three to five years, or I am in business 10 or 20, but I, I want to create, I don't have that big pipeline, and I want to create some awareness. What do you say when they say, I've tried it, but it doesn't work for me? You know that happens all day long. They say, oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the first thing that I usually get is when someone says, you know, I tried Instagram, but it didn't work is maybe they did it for a month. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Maybe they did it for two months. Maybe they posted consistently for two or three times a week and then they just gave up. And what's happening out there is when clients are looking up your design firm, it's Darla Powell Interiors or Susan McNuggets Interiors, (laughs) they are really scoping out all of your sources of PR. You know, how are you comporting yourself? How are you showing up? And they're going to check out your social media and they're going to see how you engage with people who comment. How If someone says, hey, you know, this order that you ordered didn't come in in time, how are you dealing with conflict? How is your customer service? So, you know, that that's incredibly important and it gives you gravitas. It's part of your street cred, so to say, as an interior designer. If you're even high inter- interior designers, I had Julia Malloy on our podcast and she was saying the same thing. It, high-end designers, if someone's going to hire you and then they go to your social and they see 100 followers, they might have a second thoughts about, oh, how much effort and care are you putting into your business? Is this how they run their day-to-day? You know, are they, How conscientious are they? And if you have a designer, even on the high-end side, that has 100 followers and they go and creep out another one that has 10,000, who are they more likely to hire? It's a little mm-hmm. bit of a popularity game in that way. And it just it just helps to add to that that funnel entrance mm-hmm. to bring them and give you the credibility and the gravitas to hire you for their design firm. Not only if and that's the funnel part to bring them to the website, but like I said, I, I, I don't know, I don't remember if I said it here or if I said it on the show mm-hmm. in the in the green room, but for the design firm, we get direct inquiries on our social all the time because I'm able to to show what it is to work with me. And it's, it's just seriously important. And and social media is not going anywhere. You know, it's not going away. It's not a trend. It's not a fad. It's huge multi-billion dollar business that, that gets clients results. So, you know, even if you do have a really strong referral game, you should you be on it? Yes. Mm. Um, Are you desperate to get clients from it? Like for window in window works case, probably not, but it, you just, you have to have it anymore. You can't, you can't really survive the long run without having a well-rounded social media presence. Mm. And it's it, the part of it for me that, you know, I complain all the time because you guys don't know what business was like before all of this. It was so much nicer, actually. <laughs> it was so much easier. <laughs> it, yeah. was. it was. I literally had a conversation with our team a week ago on Monday, and I said, I want to seriously explore could we eliminate email? Could we do business without email? And I said, (laughs) no, I mean, I definitely, this was like a serious conversation at the table. I was like, (laughs) um, we would maintain it for vendor communication, for confirmations, for invoicing, but that would be it. Like, could we turn email off for all consumer related stuff? And of course they all one said that we could not. <laughs> I was like, but think again, couldn't we? <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's like, and it's in that same vein. And I've said also on the show often when 
Vin and I would back in the day sit down and discuss our marketing budget for each year. And when I say back in the day, I mean all the way back in the olden days, like in the 90s and the 80s. And and, and we literally would say, okay, we're going to be in the Star Ledger 12 times this year. We're going to do, you know, eight appearances in this magazine. We're going to do these Val Pack things. And you literally, in a day, we could figure out our budget, figure out our locations, and the next week I could draft and come up with the ads for the whole year based on the seasons and then have the meetings with each of these outlets. And literally in under 10 days, you were done marketing. It was like scheduled, <laughs> see you, that. bye. You know, and you just <laughs> like the, the ads rolled out and the phones rang. The ads rolled out and the phones rang. And now it's this constant thing. But to your point, it's not going anywhere as much as, you know, the old geezers like me want it to. It is part of the reality of our life now, right? It, it is. And I have to tell you that nine out of 10 of the designers that come to us at Wingnut abhor it, abhor social media, hate having to do it. They just, they they can't be bothered with it. So I, I feel your pain. I see your pain every day, but it is a necessary, I don't even want to say evil because I personally love it, mm. but it, it just, it absolutely is a necessity for a successful business and building your reach and building your brand anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, you, what your services at Wingnut are so incredibly valuable because if you don't have the time, energy, or patience, you know, then to turn it over to you guys is excellent. I know that my social is done in-house, but I had my daughter, Christy, out on maternity leave for four months, and you guys picked up my social seamlessly, executed it, and, you know, we didn't miss a beat. It was just, you know, I, I just valued it, that so much because, to your point at the beginning of the show, you know the language, you know the landscape, you know the demographic, you know who the designers are, what they like, what they want, what they need. And so since designers are my, you know, potential clients, that's who I want to attract, you, you, there was not even a question that, I would turn it over to anybody but you guys, right? And um, working with Karina was outstanding. I love Karina. Um, such, a, such a talented writer and so um, good ideas and responsive. So I had an excellent experience. Awesome. And first of all, I want to say how selfish of it was Christy. You know, it was how selfish of her to go have a baby and leave you hanging on the, <laughs> telling you on the social side. <laughs> really, I mean, serious. I don't know how you're raising your kids. But. I'm telling you. You know, I mean, it was crazy. I was just like, wait, you can't just do social from home? Like, what are you talking I don't about? I get it. <laughs> what it's just a baby, for God's sake. Uh, yeah, no, we had a great experience with you. And I, I remember something you really said that I, I loved was that we are, would you say that we are the Jaguar or the Rolls Royce of social media marketing? Did I? Is that what I said? I don't know. Yeah, I, I did. I, I, it doesn't surprise it me one bit. Start. It doesn't surprise me one bit because <laughs> yeah. that's how I feel about it. And I remember what I also appreciated was, I appreciated, look, all day long, you know, on the podcast from the design business side, we talk about process and putting your client through your particular process and how important that is and right. how, you know, it, you know, when you are, if you don't want to text at two o'clock on Saturday, then you tell your client no texting at two o'clock on Saturday. But we also know from business experience and like from consultants like Ashley Uhl, who has been on the show a couple of times, who specializes in the client experience is that there is that moment where you also do have to evaluate your client that you're working with and you don't revamp and you don't throw everything away that you do. But there is always that, you know, she wants to give it, help designers do an elevated client experience. And so there is room for tweaking if the client is your client and you want them to be your client and you can make the concessions, right? So we don't just throw the baby out with the bathwater, but we evaluate the 
the relationship and the value of having that potential client. And I remember you had this very terrific onboarding process. And you know me, I have no D. I think I have, I think I have adult onset ADD. I swear to gosh. And I hate to anybody who, God forbid, truly, you know, suffers from it. I don't mean to make fun. I really don't. But it's nuts. It's the more I do, the less I seem to be able to be in the weeds. And I finally, after like two weeks, I was just like, I'm sorry, Karina, just do it. Like, just do it. Stop asking me. Stop talking to me. I appreciate it. It's all fine. I trust you 100%. Because you'd be like, here's your things for review for this week's post. I'm like, no, sweetie, I don't care about them. I know you do a good job. So that's what we call an ideal client. (laughs) Just do it. It's just like, you know, when you get that design client, they're just like, I don't care what you do. Just make it pretty. Yes. Well, it comes from the trust. It comes from Mm -hmm. the trust. I know Karina. I know you, I know Shana, I know Natalie. And, you know, I just, it's not that I don't care. It's that sure. I know you're going to do it good. And and half the time I would say, what do I know about this stuff? Like, if you say do it, do it. <laughs> it's so funny because Karina would say, Luann hasn't completed her onboarding, you know, process. Because we do an in-depth discovery. Do. We, just, we don't like to just throw crap up. We like to have a, a sound strategy, a plan, a business plan for your marketing. And uh, you, were, you were just like, just do it. I know. And Karina says, what do I do with this? And I said, do whatever Luann wants. <laughs> That was our motto for your account. <laughs> Whatever Luann wants, that's what we do. Well, I, I finally, I, at one point I said, Karina, I know you listen to the show. You've been on the show. You know me. You don't, I don't need to do this with you. Like, and the thing was, it was because I knew I was clogging the process. And I have to say, it was really nice for me to see that in-depth onboarding process because it made it so that I felt 100%, even though I know you, your credibility, what you created for yourself, it made me see that what you did for yourself by the seat of your pants, you had converted into a legitimate legitimate strategy that you could duplicate client after client. And so it made it so that I could, without reservation, recommend you. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to do it and I wanted to be part of it, but I know that it's, <laughs> you know, if you were going to deal and work with somebody that none of you knew, you need that process. You Absolutely. have to get their you voice. Have to. Yes. Every business needs systems and processes, and it has to be repeatable and scalable. I mean, it's the same thing that you say on the show for the design business. Mm-hmm. You have to have your, you have to have everything buttoned down in your systems and procedures, and that's what we have here as well. And it's it's super important because you can't just be flying by the seat of your pants and setting up. I mean, this is someone's business. This mm-hmm. is someone's livelihood, and they're expecting results. Mm-hmm. You, you have to have, which is why you know I'll I'll credit my team again. My team, every single one of them has master's degrees in either marketing or PR because listen I'm a wingnut I have to hire people smarter than me (laughs) and they they absolutely map that out and with the analytics and everything so you know we didn't do that exactly with you um (laughs) I was just to keep the train moving just keep it moving moving. so like I said our motto was just make Luann happy Well, I I mean, and I think it is, it's not only all of the personal relationships that we have between us, but in my case, you do have the podcast every day that you can just go get my voice, my brand, my intent, my message. And that is not the case when you work with an interior designer, you know, you do need that whole analysis. It's like Nicole, right? Nicole Heimer, Curio Electro, who we both love and adore. And, um, There's funny because I'll sometimes work with a designer who is struggling to create their website and they'll come to me and they'll be like, they want to do this and I don't know that. And, you know, a lot of the designers I'm working with on a coaching basis and they'll send me their website and say, what do you think? And how come they're not coming up with something better? And I always say to them, if you're working with somebody that's building your website that hasn't done that onboarding, that discovery process, just like you do when you take on a new client with Wingnut, Nicole does the same thing when she builds, she's not going to build your website just by one conversation. She's spends hours with you getting to know you and Mm -hmm. it's that same 
that same thing. And so um, I just respected that when I did have the opportunity to be <laughs> in the inside of your business, I was like, oh, she has taken everything she's learned and she's put it to a duplicatable process. This is outstanding. So I have to say, I'm so glad you mentioned Nicole Heimer because you're absolutely 100% right. We just redid our Wingnut social website with her and holy cow, does she have her crap together. <laughs> Everything just super buttoned down. Her processes from you know the first call, the discovery session, the, the branding, the development stages to the launch. Seriously, I wish I had started with her when I started the Wingnut Social website. You know, I, you say, you know, you only cry once, you get the mm. good thing first, it's going to last. Um, just super, super, we're over the moon with it. So you guys can check that out at wingnutsocial.com and see some examples of her work. If you are dying to have a, a website for your interior design business, run, don't walk. Mm -hmm. She's the best. It's and truth. I love we're friends. I, I, yeah. Of course. And that's why the comparison is with both the way that you both take the time to get to know your client before you build something for them. You're not just like, hey, this dress would look pretty. Why don't you put it on? You know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> well, it's, it's important for us because at the end of the day, we want to have produce real results for our clients. We just don't want to throw up some pre-templated or, you know, banked hashtags or, or not speak in that person's vernacular or brand voice because that's not going to get them the ROI at the end of the day. So it's serving the customer, the client, but it's also serving us because we can say, look, look, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Client, look at the, the reach that your social media had, look at the engagement that you had, and that's all based on what we're able to discover and implement in the strategy and the process. So it's it's a little selfish <laughs> in that way because <laughs> we want to be successful for the client, but it, there's no other way to do it. No. And to, you know, I know you're you're being funny about it, but it's not selfish. It's no different than designing a beautiful space. You want the room to come out beautifully just as much for your client as you do for you because it's your reputation. It exactly. reflects on you and stuff. And it's the same analogy. Absolutely. So, 100%. so the thing is, Darla, um, there are designers listening that are not at the stage of their business yet where they can invest and hire out their social media um, arm of their business. Is there a couple of, I know, of course, they can certainly listen to your podcast and get tips and tips and tips all day long, but we're here. So let's say, <laughs> what are some of the things that come to mind, either, you know, common mistakes that designers might make that you just say, if you just change this one or two things, it will make a difference in your reach or your um, likability factors or anything or things that are good practices? Okay. The main one that just popped to my head, just as you're asking that question, and I see this so much with designers that come to Wingnut. And when I'm doing an audit of their social media channels, I have no idea, none at all, what the designer looks like, I know. How, how they speak, what they talk. Who am I hiring here? This is Susan McNuggets Interiors, but where's a picture of Susan? Mm -hmm. Who am I inviting to my home to, you know, it's a very intimate thing. It's a very, very vulnerable space for a client to be in, to have you come in and, and basically judge, right? What, mm -hmm. what their design is and how you can improve it. So that is the, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Put some pictures of yourself on your social and your feed. And even better, if you, if you can get used to it and get comfortable on video is speak on camera, speak to your client, let them know that this is how you comport yourself. This is your personality. And that's a huge percentage of the vetting process for you and for your client. So you're not going to get mismatches. If your personality is a little bit wing nutty, you're not going to get clients who, when you show up to their house, are going to be like, what is, who's this? Right. I you was know, expecting somebody much more formal and, you know, clackety clack high heels and all of that yeah, stuff, where's right? Where's the Gucci bag? Not here. Right. Not here. So, yeah, for sure. That's, that's the, when I first started doing that, because you know me, I'm incredibly shy and introverted. So it took me a hot minute to be comfortable on camera and on video. But when I started doing that, I actually got clients saying, I hired you because I love your videos and I love the way you talk and I love the way you comport yourself and I just had to have you design my house. And when I heard a clients actually start saying that, I was like, holy cow, this stuff really works. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been doing this from the get go. That's the number one thing. The, the second one is to make sure now let's focus on Instagram, but this kind of, this kind of does filter over all the feeds. Make sure that the photos that you're showing on your feeds that are client facing are aesthetically pleasing. 
professional shots are great or well taken iPhone shots, but don't have those dark, dingy before shots being the first thing that people see when they go to your feed. If you're going to do before shots, have it be like, you know, where you swipe over after the pretty shot and see, mm. you know, because you don't, because people, people are quick, right? I have ADT too, ADD, ADD uh, too. And when they're going through your feed, they'll just see the ugly before and keep scrolling. So that's another thing. And also to not use the most used or very most common hashtags that are blankety, have a mix of hashtags, have hashtags that are niche, have hashtags that are a little bit more popular, and then maybe throw in a couple that are super popular, you know, in the, in the mix and, and have a nice cocktail there. And that takes a whole hell of a lot of time and a lot of research to figure out what hashtags are going to work for you in your market. A good way to find out is to kind of go over and snoop on your competitors and see what they're using. Don't copy them exactly, but use a nice little cocktail that's personal to you and your business. That's something that we do here too on the discovery is when we do the deep dive, we, we do check out the competitors in your market, depending on your end game and seeing, you know, how, how does this account compare? How are they doing? You know, what can we do to replicate some of their success or, obviously more but without repeating what they're doing we're not mm. copying what they're doing but you have to, you have to in any marketing agency you have to research your competitor market so that's important too you want to you want to do you do want to pay attention to what they're doing but don't don't get so caught up into thinking that you have to do exactly what they're doing but it, it's a good way to to see what is working in my industry in my area and those are the top three. Oh, oh and another one and we recently, you know, Kate O'Hara. Oh, from, I love Kate. She's been on the show a couple of times. Yeah, and our, ours as well. I love her. Yeah. Really. So we had her on an episode talking about marketing budget. So marketing budget is anywhere from, depending on how seasoned you are to how junior you are, could be anywhere from 5 to 20% of your overall gross, annual gross. And she said something that really struck out to me is that when you're a newer designer, that percentage should actually be even higher. Oh, yeah. Right, because yeah. you're trying to build that traction. You're building that brand awareness and that following. So so think about that. So maybe you don't have an annual revenue yet, but you have a projected annual revenue that you want, or you have a certain idea in your head of how much exposure you want and figure out what that 20% of that marketing budget could be. Because we have clients that come to us at Wingnuts, I have no idea. I don't have a budget. I haven't set aside any budget for marketing. That's super, it's super important. Unless, again, you're that designer who's only referrals and that's good. You're, mm. you're just going to, that's your story and you're sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, right? So I, it doesn't matter how successful you are though. You have to, de you have to dedicate a certain percentage of, um, to, to marketing and set that aside and make that work for you to keep the pipeline going. Absolutely. I, it's so funny because um, in all the years from the very beginning when we built Window Works, Vin always, you know, was absolutely committed to setting aside, to, to your exact point, the marketing budget. And we would always air, we, we, it was, there was no question it was going to be 20% or more sometimes. Yeah. And we did that for many, many years. And he might have, we might have like sometimes dropped down to, maybe we were at 23, 24% and we would drop down to 20 or we did 18. But I, one of the, uh, there was a period of time and it was only maybe 10 years ago, possibly where we were audited by the IRS three years in a row and it finally became known well I shouldn't say finally I think we knew the first year why but it was the reason what what triggered the audit was that at a business at that point of longevity 30 years in business we were still up around 18 percent of our budget in marketing and wow. the the IRS was like, there's no way. They're burying money in marketing. <laughs> like they're You're going to the Bahamas instead of like like putting ads in the newspaper. <laughs> but we just we just never pulled the, 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 the foot off the gas on marketing. It is something that we do every single year, blah, 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 blah. And of course, you know, the Vin man is an absolute lunatic when it comes to the finances. <laughs> so each year that when we were audited, he had every single receipt in every single thing that they called for. Um, but they did audit us three years in a row. And finally in the fourth year, they came knocking again. 
And it was funny because this is just a little lesson to just speak up a little bit sometimes in your business, depending on what's happening. But he was aggravated. I love any, you know, I I credit him with 95% of what I know, right? Um, but But that fourth year, he was aggravated and he was mad. But he didn't think to say, hey, stop it. And what happened was, I, like, when he was talking to me about how aggravated and he met, is mad that we were getting audited again, in that um, conversation, he said, and on top of it, we're spending, like, five grand every time with the CPA to get uh. us out of an audit that we've never been caught in anything that we didn't have buttoned up. And so when he wow. said that, then I said to him, why aren't we having our CPA say that? You've mm-hmm. audited us three times, triggered by the same thing. How dare you do this? Like how many years in a row do you get to do this? And we just get to, why do we have to keep spending 35,000, 3,500 to five grand when there's nothing there? And do you know what? Our CPA wrote that letter to the IRS and they, they stopped that fourth audit. Oh, wow. Yeah. The squeaky wheel. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's what I, that's why I took a minute for it because you just don't have to like, you know, he's so accustomed to the system sometime and the way things go that when I get like, well, what the heck? And why do we have to this? He's like, <laughs> that's how it is. I'm like, well, why is it that way? Who made it that way? Who's in charge of these things? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why our motto was whatever makes Luann happy. <laughs> 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 oh my god that's so funny but anyway so you have to stand up for yourself sometimes <laughs> this is the little lesson there anyway so i love these tips darla and you know <clears throat> i'm a big one for who are you um i, I mm-hmm. when i come to your you're talking about the main feed on instagram to make sure that you as a person show up often enough in pictures and i agree yes. with that i always harp on the fact that if i don't have see your name in your bio it makes me crazy Um, And then it makes me even crazier if I actually click on your website link from your bio and I can't find your name. And, you know, I have to click through three Mm -hmm. pages to find your name. Makes me crazy. The other thing that makes me crazy is if I can't figure out where you do business. I had that just this morning before this uh, interview. A designer emailed me, heartfelt email you know, love your podcast. I'm, I need help scaling my business, whatever the email, I went through about eight of them this morning, but whatever her particular struggle was. And before I answer your email, I do what I'm not full of crap. This is what I do. I go to your website. I look you up. I get an idea of who you are, what you're doing. And, um, finally on the fifth click through, I found out where this firm was doing business out of. And I just was Hmm. frustrated. I was, and I needed to keep finding it because I actually wanted to just call the designer because she included her phone number. But I was doing this at my time on the East Coast at eight o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, well, maybe don't just dial her phone at eight o'clock in the morning, Luann. She could be, (laughs) you know, on the West Coast. (laughs) And so that was the, the reason I went to the website was to learn about her. But then when I had the idea that I wanted to just pick up the phone and call, then I was like, oh, where she located and honestly if I find you if I'm a potential consumer and you are you know take it to your situation you're doing everything you want to do to get a consumer to find you through social I actually land on your social and I click through to your website and I've got to go through four or five pages to find out what part of the world you're in yeah like stop right yeah I I can tell you how many times I see that too that's I'm glad you reminded me of that where if I'm looking at a an account even if it's not interior designers maybe I'm looking for someone in Miami locally to do a a sub or or, Mm -hmm. or a trade for my design business and I have no idea where the hell they work Mm -hmm. and the same thing on you know if I go to I have gone to designers websites and there's no picture of them there's no about me not much less the social or where they work so it's super important if you want to get clients in your local area, let them know what that local area is. Yes. <laughs> That's you, you just, you take it like for granted, this is where I am. People should know, but it's not, it's, no. you have to put it out there. And I think that is that, that, that is the, and sometimes what I'm saying is I think it happens to a designer when they don't have somebody like a pro 
like our mm-hmm. friend Nicole designing their website who would never yes. let anybody make these mistakes of not having their location and their photos and so forth like that. Um, but I think it happens. It's my theory on why I never ask anybody for directions to their own house, because you, <laughs> you know the way so well that you're going to forget two turns and I'm going to be that lunatic cursing you out as I'm driving in circles, trying to find your house. Right. And so, you <laughs> know, great. when you build your own website or you, you work with somebody to do your website, site and you were the final say see that's what happens when you work with some companies they're just executing your it's like if a client said I want to hire you as an interior designer but every single thing you said this sofa or that sofa and they picked it that's what happens with a lot of website builders it's like do you like this page or this page it's like what do I know from what I like right <laughs> and so that's what I, I find is you know your business so well and you feel you know you so well that when you read your own website, you don't realize all of the critical information that's been left out if I'm a stranger coming to your website, right? Yeah. Yeah, because we can't see past ourselves sometimes. Right. We, 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 can't, we get in our own way. So that's, that's a good, good point as far as delegating. If, that's, if you're not a website designer, uh, you know, delegate it. Delegate it to somebody who knows what, what you're doing so you can keep making your hourly rate, making things pretty. And same thing for social media as well. If, if that's not something that you hate, which designers notoriously do, hire an intern, you mm-hmm. know, or delegate it or, or, or an agency or, you know, even us. I, I don't want to chill. I don't want to be commercial, but delegate it to somebody who mm-hmm. knows what they're doing so you can keep making that 300 bucks an hour, you know, Furnishing a house. Mm -hmm. And or at the very least, if you don't have the funds yet, get someone else who doesn't know you to just look at it. To look at is every all the information you you know what I always say too is when we are um doing our there's so many times I find when I ask an interior designer, any business owner, honestly, uh what they do, how they do it, who they do it for, if I cannot tell you how often I'm looking at them going, I still don't get it. I had this recently on the podcast. Um, A guest was coming on and it wasn't an industry guest. It was an outside industry guest. And it took me 15 minutes to get it off air, Hmm. to get it. And I just kept thinking to myself, this is insane. You need to be able to just say, this is what I do. This is who I do it for, why I do it, and, you know, how I do it. And so I find that same thing with, like we're saying with the website, is the discovery call. Or it's the, the design presentation. Or it's any system in your business where... I will often, if a designer tells me that they have it locked down, I will say, go do it to, you know, go do your discovery call to one of your girlfriends, go do your discovery call to, you know, the friend that you know at the bank and just see if they get what you do for a living. Because I, I, like I, I say, you just told me and I don't get it. So you don't believe me, go ask somebody else. But <laughs> That's what you got to do. You have to be able to. And so it's the same with your social media. I have to come to your social media, Darla, right? And really get you and know who you are, right? Yeah. As a brand and what it is that you're offering. What is your value proposition for someone coming to your page or to a client? And that reminds me, that's actually a really good tip, Luann, there. We had a guest on the on the Wingnut Social podcast, Karima Negmoosh, mm. and she was talking about branding. I know, right? What an exotic name. Right. She was talking about branding, and she said, you know, if you can't, or if you're at the point in your business where you really can't afford to pay a professional to do branding, go and ask your five closest friends or people mm-hmm. to say five things about you that describe you or just, des- you know, describe your business or what, you know, they, th- they think how you present yourself to the world and see if that aligns with what it is that you are presenting or what it is that you want mm-hmm. to be known for or want to be presenting. And you can tweak it from there. And that's pretty free, except they might get irritated with you for bothering them. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. Your friends and your good clients. What, mm-hmm. what, what do you, what do you think about my business? What is the impression that it makes? What did you do? Why did you like working with me? What were the things I did really well? You know, have some courage and say, what are the things I didn't do so well? Right. Yeah. And that can be hard to hear. That's mm-hmm. a little bit of a hard conversation sometimes, but you'll be much better off for it in, in the long run for sure. And you'll be presenting yourself exactly the way you want to to your clients. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It is that um, outside look into your business. I remember that was one of my um, turning points in my my love-hate 
for window works and there's no hate. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, your love yeah. hate for being an entrepreneur is really what it. it is. Um, and I had gotten myself to a point where I had lost some mojo. I had really mm -hmm. lost some mojo for it. It was many years in and it was just like, all right, already. And, um, you know, I'm every day going out and three or four appointments a day. Hi, I'm Luann from Window Works. Yeah, do you want drapes? You want blinds? And I just was in a low mojo period. Sure. And sure. there was, it, it, Vinny calls it the golden handcuffs. It was not like, hey, let's just, you know, close this up and start something else. I don't know, you know, <laughs> we got a few people here that are depending on us. <laughs> not that easy to pivot. And, um, but there was a moment, and I remember it very clearly. I, I wrote about it in my first book when I was mostly... When you know me, once I'm with you, I always I love to be with people and I love to have good conversations and I come alive. It's like I walk in the door and you just plug me in and I'm, oh, yeah, this is great. I love window works. This is so much True fun. Story. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. And so so I can't say that I was fully taking for granted the person that I was with at that moment because I do value and enjoy all my interactions with all of my clients and my friends and so forth. But there was this little back brain thing that was not really fully realizing the appreciation. And I was just taking it for granted. Of course, this woman would call us again because she had called us three or four times. But there is also that part of me that knows that a client doesn't have to call you the second or third or fourth time. And so mm -hmm. as a habit, as a, as is, as an absolute habit for me in my interactions with business and window works at the time, when I'm getting ready to leave, I always say, thank you for calling us again. I know you, you had other people that you could have called. And when I said that to her, I said it because I believed it, but I had lost that. <clears throat> thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. And her reaction blew me away. She turned around. Thankfully, she didn't sense any of my lukewarmness for my own business at that point. And right. she just came back and she was like, call somebody else. Like, why would I do that? You know, I love, <laughs> you know, our relationship. We've been working Aww. together X amount of years. You know, Billy is amazing. You know, when you guys say you're going to show up for an install, you actually show up. You know, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. She went on. And I just looked at her. It was, and I just walked out and I said, you little self son of a gun you have taken <laughs> for granted what you yep. have on your hands here you know what I mean and so yes. it, it is a value you know it was a big huge learning lesson for me because I just like really on a dime changed I was like juice for window works we are we have done something this is exciting I want to continue <laughs> to create this and the thing is it became it was when I came up with our, our, our motto, experience, expertise, excellence, because I drove mm -hmm. away and I said, what were all the things that she said? Well, she re appreciates our many years in business, our experience. And she was talking about Billy and his exceptional way that he installs and that she can rely on him to do things right. I'm like, that's expertise. And she just said, and you always do what you say you're going to do. And I'm like, that's excellence. And that's it. We, we leaned into that. We changed our marketing. We started branding that. We started talking about that to everybody. So to your point, uh, you know, do that new were in business, but we were 30 years in and did that, you know, 25 years in and did that, right? Well, it's always changing. You always have to be able to adapt. It's not, there's never going to be, especially with marketing, that you do one thing and you do it for another 20 years. It's, there's always an adaptation. And I'm super impressed. Like, how amazing is it that that woman was in your life just at the, yes. that time and that moment to inspire you in that way? Talk about meant to be. Mm-hmm. It's so true. It's so true. But you know that feeling when you just feel like you just got jazzed yes. up again, right? And I yeah. was driving yeah, down the road. I'm like, ah, this is great. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that happened to me because, you know, I was getting a little burnout on the design side because, you know, running two businesses, you can really use burning the candle at both ends. Mm -hmm. And we just hired a, a new creative director for Darla Powell Interiors, and he's doing amazing. And I'm actually mm -hmm. like, yes, okay, thank God. Someone competent who can help me there. And I I got re-inspired. I think it. I think it's normal to get a little bit of burnout and to oh, take for yeah. granted things that you've created. And sometimes it does take a third party to say, "Hey, you know, you've accomplished this, that, and the other." And you're like, "You know what? Wow! It's it's a gratitude moment for sure." Absolutely. And and the then the bottom line of it is, it's an opportunity to convert that into 
find, you know, attracting more people who appreciate those qualities. When you're someone sit there objectively and tells you what they think about you to your point, then go and put that in your marketing and put that in your social media and make sure other people know that that's what current clients think of you because that's what they value. And it will attract more of those same people. Right. Absolutely. That's where we were going with that. That's that's my, my ADD. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry. I'll always ring it back around. I got your back. My nickname My nickname is not Wingnut by accident. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Well, I have to say, Darla, I just think, you know, it's, again, I can't help but just marvel at your accomplishments. But it's so clear to me when I speak with you and we have situations like this, and I've read the chapter in your book that's, you know, coming out in November, you are just, you got it locked down, and you really have taken something that you had no idea that you had a skill and an aptitude for and just completely blown it out into what I just admire so much is an actionable strategy. And, you know, I'm going to say one thing too here, because I know this to be true. Uh, You just because we can do something well doesn't mean we can teach other people to do it well or we can express how to do it. It's, it's two different skills. So you could have been, and this is my observation, you could have been the person who literally did everything that created a zero to 7,000 following in six months and then created an agency and did all these things. But you, it's entirely possible that you would not have had the ability to translate that to scale, to teach, to execute for others. Mm. It's, it's, and I know, you know how I know this is because my husband, Vin, is an excellent athlete, okay? He was, you know, that guy in high school. Thank God we didn't go to high school <laughs> at the same time because he wouldn't have looked at me and I wouldn't have looked would at have him. Would have had problems, <laughs> Exactly, yeah. right? But he was that guy, you know, all letterman in all three sports and <laughs> voted best looking of his class and all nice. that stuff. Oh, you're right. Go, girl. Yeah, and, and, and but... But then he went on to coach and he always coached. um, He went on to coach all the way to baseball to the college level for a while. And then he realized he had to make money. And the thing is, he can get up and hit a ball. He can get up and throw a ball. He can do it better than most people can do it. But he actually knows how to break down the swing in words. So a lot of us go, well, just kind of do this. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) Just, you know, do that. But he would say, shoulder here, hip here. You know what it reminds me of? A good yoga instructor. The nuance of where the little bit of the hip has to rotate. He can do that. And, And so that was my aha moment that just because we're good at something doesn't mean we know how to teach others or we can explain how to do it well. Because I'm an athlete too, but I could never have broken down the swing for you or the throw for you. I'd be like, Hey, just watch me do it. It's like this. Right. And so that's what I notice about you, Darla, is that you have the innate skill and talent, but you also have the ability and the capacity to break it down so that it can be duplicated and taught and executed. And that is something to be really noticed. Well, thank you. I'd never thought of that. I actually, it's, I never, I never really appreciated that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. You, you just you just told me something I had never thought of. Right, right. <laughs> so thank you for that. Yeah, it's an important skill. You know, I have it in other areas, but I don't have it in all mm-hmm. areas. We don't all have it in any or all. Um, and so not it's, but when you have it, it's great to have. And I, it's great to know that you have it. So, you know. So you, you're not going to be teaching yoga anytime soon? No, Is that what you're saying? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll teach you how to negotiate a conversation though then we're going to break there you that go baby I can down. use that let's do that <laughs> so but anyway Darla I'm so happy and delighted to have you in this next book and of course you'll be part of the book launch that we're happening in November and of course you'll be part of Luann Live the yes, virtual event wait. oh my god I love the first one I have to tell you guys seriously that's the best event I have ever attended so if you when that does roll around go run don't walk yeah, that, that's yeah. the best yeah I, I I thank you for saying that because um um, we, we are going to have to do it virtual this year because of COVID, of course, uh, but okay. I, I know, but I am committed to it being the same sweet spot of feeling like we are, 
just in a small group of people in a room and making those connections. You know, it's it's called Luann Live. It's about the conversation. It's about the interaction. Oh, okay. it's yeah. the rela- you, know, re- you know, the relationships. And it's not going to be just this passive event. It's going to be highly interactive, lots of bells mm. and whistles and amazingness so that you just feel like, I, you know what it is? I have the 300 designers that came to the first event that are going to be going, well, is this as good, Mm -hmm. right? How could they not? And so (laughs) I want them to go, OMG, this was every bit as good. (laughs) Yeah. You know, it will be. It's amazing. I have to ask you, do we still have walk-on songs? Is that going to happen? You know, that's so crazy that you asked that because I have requested that with the production company. And you know what? It's tens of of thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars to get the royalty for Ah. real life songs. Yes. So annoying. I just Ah, learned that last week. I was like, because, because I said to him, he was like, Oh no, the royalty fees are outrageous. And I'm like, no, quote them to me, like quote them to me because this is important (laughs) to me. And then he quoted and I was like, yes, so we'll do regular, like free music. Right. (laughs) I'll use my wingnut music. I was going to choose the Britney Spears one. You better work. B word. I thought, I love that song. That gets me, that gets me, man, hyped up. If I'm ever like feeling low or, you know, feeling like I don't have the energy for something, I play that and I'm good to go. Oh, that's so funny. You know what my song is for that? I can't, I can't pronounce it because I'm such a dummy. That Danso Cordoro, Danso Cordoro. It's like, do you know that song? Uh, I don't think so. No. Maybe? It, it's, it's Danza, D-A-N-Z-A, Cordoro. Doro or something. It's a uh, Latin Zumba type song. Oh, that's uh, I do like Latin music. And oh. I, I live in Miami now. I've been assimilated. Oh my goodness, Darla! Honest to God, I have a trampoline in my garage, and in between podcast do. interviews, I will go down and I will put that on for three minutes, and then I come back up again. I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> you know what I do before podcasts? If I'm not in the mood for Britney, I play. By the way, free Britney. What's going on there? I play Metallica <laughs> on my headphones, oh and that. That goodness. juices me up too. You're so it would have been a toss up between You're... Britney and Metallica. Oh yeah, I know. I'm so disappointed, but we're exploring ways because music is so important to me. It is. Yeah, mm-hmm. it really is. And all of us having our walk on song was outrageous. That was great. <laughs> and how awesome! How awesome was Nancy Gansakoff for dancing up oh, there? My gosh, goodness, that little girl's got moves. I know. I know. Right. <laughs> oh, and the, th- the sin of it is, I had better ideas and plans for making a better presentation of. The the whole walk up. We, we did it. We pulled it off, but you know, I do the autopsy of everything. And that was yeah. one of my, we could do this better. We could do this. Well, better. it was the first event. Yeah. I got it for the first time you ever did that. That was pretty, pretty tight. I have to say that it was really, really well done. I, everything's going to have learning curves and, you know, some hiccups and it wasn't without it, but it was, it was, I'm telling you seriously, the best event I've ever been to. Mm. Of course I was emceeing it. So I might be a little <laughs> prejudiced, but <laughs> But it it was terrific. And I have people telling me, people that come to Wingnut that went to that saying it, they still talk about it. I know. I know. So the bar so is high, but you know me. <laughs> oh, you, you'll, Put, you're an athlete. You can jump. In. <laughs> I am like not, there's like take no prisoners. If, if, I, if I told you how many times in the last month I have said to everybody involved planning it, no, see, here's the only thing I want to hear. OMG, that was amazing. That's it. Exactly. So yep. if you know what you want to d- propose to me answers that question, then great. If not, think of something else and come back tomorrow. (laughs) I love it. Just keep Luann happy. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Well, Darla, I love you. You certainly do. You keep me happy laughing and all the good stuff. So, so glad that we're in each other's worlds. It's you make mine better every day. And I'm so happy for you and all your success. And of course, it's well earned. Thank you so much for being on the show, Darla. Thank you so much, Luann. You know I adore you, and I will do this anytime with you. I so appreciate you. I just love Darla's energy. I just love her to bits, all right? One thing I think is really amazing, it's just three and a half years since she started her interior design business from scratch. When you think about what she has accomplished in that short period of time, it's pretty remarkable. And I'm thrilled, absolutely thrilled and gratified that this podcast helped educate Darla and help give her the courage to take the leap into this completely new career for her. Because 
what will we do in this industry without her? I mean, I just can't even imagine not knowing Darla and having all of the things that she does and helps us with social media through Wingnut Social. All right. And I have to say, I know that over these last several years, many of you have shared a sentiment with me very similar to Darla's, that um, you had the courage to start your own firm after listening to the podcast, whether it be weeks or months or years, and that you made the switch. And I really think that this is truly amazing. But I don't want you to ever forget, because I never, ever forget, that just like Darla, you are the one doing the real work. I mean, that's the thing, okay? So, and this is exactly why that Darla and myself both do our podcasts, right? Now, of course, there is that that we love to talk, (laughs) okay? But the thing is, it's so amazing to build a community where we all come together and we learn from each other and we encourage each other and we enjoy hanging out with each other. And so I just am glad to know that not only does my podcast help you, but Darla's does as well. Okay. And I think it's a good thing that we have people like Darla because I don't share Darla's passion for social media marketing at the quite the level that she does. And I actually, you know, you know me, I have to be dragged kicking and screaming sometimes into this world of 24 seven marketing. I sometimes look at it like this beast that has to be fed. And you know, I remember the old days when you could just put an ad in the newspaper and the phone would ring and it was easier, but there's no getting around it. And thank goodness that we have people like Darla and Wingnut Social that help us weed through it and help us make sense of it. Because I know, for one, I rely on their advice tons and tons of the time, okay? And so there are good things, though, about social media, right? I mean, I do. I'm not all complaining. I really do. I First of all, I know I wouldn't be where I am without it. So as much as I do pine for when it was easier, I am grateful for social media, okay? And um, all you have to do is look around and see maybe what it's done for you and your business. Or like Darla said in her early days, you know, it's what got her on this podcast and look where she is now and what she's done to it, okay? Um, she's having her her DPI, uh, Darla Palantir's is blowing up. She's doing speaking. She's, you know, you know, it's, it wouldn't have happened, as she said, if it weren't for social media. So I may complain, but I never lose sight of my gratitude for it because it does bring us together. So yay on that. Now, let's recap some of Darla's tips. Okay, so first of all, she said, get on social. Okay, she says, get your face on social, your voice on social, your personality on social. This is what she means when she says, get on social. She says, think of your potential clients. Choosing a designer is a big deal, all right? It is a big deal for for clients, okay? They have to work closely with you and they want to know what they're getting into. So this is a great way for you to show them who you are and how you work just by expressing it through your your social. And of course, Darla said, video is awesome for this. I know you know this, and I know it can sometimes be hard to do. I get it. I have to put my big girl pants on and do it half the time too, you know? The thing is, it's not that bad, and it can be fun. You just have to do it, right? And then the other thing is what your social also shows to your potential clients is how you handle yourself in tough situations sometimes. Because as Darla was explaining, if you have a negative comment or someone complains about something, you know, you can handle it with grace and they see this and that's another point for you. All right. And, you know, let's face it, as much as we cringe about this, social can be a sort of popularity contest. So think of it like a pizza place. If Joe's Pizza has 75 followers and Stan's Pizza has 35,000 followers, which pizza place are you going to order from tonight? Or which one are you at least going to give a second thought to before making your choice, right? So you have to, I don't, I don't think you have to have 35,000 followers. I really don't. But if you're going to get in and do social, I think that's the thing. Do it well. Follow the sound business practices that Darla and Wingnut Social put out in front of you. All right? That's, I think that's really the heart of it, right? And then the other tip I really loved was the before and after photos. We all know that people love these before and afters, but Darla said, 
don't put the before photo first, right? It's funny because it seems backwards. It feels like, oh, here's what the, you know, the ugly before is. Swipe to see the pretty. But she's saying that as people scroll by, you don't want anybody in a blip to mistake that before as your finished product, okay? Makes perfect sense, okay? So if you want to... um you know, think about all the things that you could do. And I always say, pick off the things that you're capable of doing, right? You don't have to do everything all at once. But when you do do something in social, do it well. I think that's sort of the other big message here, okay? And I want to say to you that if you need gorgeous window treatments, you know who you have to go (laughs) and consider. You have to consider specifying cursed drapery hardware, okay? You will be wowed by the level of design and detail, and you can take a look at the the entire portfolio of the design hardware available on their website at cursed.com. Take notice in particular of the Brisa Motorized motorization technology. This innovative slim design allows your window treatment partner, maybe it's window works, right, to attach it to a variety of rods without having to order your drapes with huge oversized returns. I'm going to tell you, this is a big deal. I know the difference. It used to be that we would have to have drape returns with 8 and 10 and 12 inches on them. Okay, that's huge. Now with the new innovation from Curse with the Brisa motorization technology, no, thing of the past. Okay, so go to Kirsch.com today and you can find your local distributor and let him or her show you all about it. All right, now the other thing for Darla, she says to open up your social game, she says do your research. You want to look at your competitors to see what's working for them and what's not. It's also a good way to get ideas for creating the hashtag cocktail that she talked about. And for your hashtag cocktail, you'll want to create a mix of both popular and niche hashtags according to Darla. And she also advises that we put 5 to 20% of our annual gross um, revenue toward marketing. At Windowworks, we budget marketing at the very high end of the suggestion, okay, consistently for 39 years because we know how important it is and we know that this has been part of our secret sauce, okay? You've got to take your marketing seriously and eventually if you want to grow, you have to choose are you spending your time or your money on it? It's as simple as that, all right? So if you're not getting the juice you want from your social media efforts, Darla says to take a step back. Pick five people and ask them to say five things about your business, okay? These people can be your friends, your clients. They, um, you know, all you need sometimes is just new eyes, all right, on what you're doing. People who will look at you, help you, and show you Sometimes the sometimes really good things that you missed about yourself and also sometimes that you need to look at and address, okay? Because we're so involved in the day-to-day of our business that we can easily miss this good, bad, and ugly, right? The goal here is to hone that message that you're sending out to the world. And if you already did this maybe three years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, it's time to do it again. We change, our businesses change, and sometimes we need to refresh on what we're doing and who we're doing it for and how we're doing it, okay? Um, I have to tell you that I'm really looking forward to seeing Darla and all of you at Luann Live, okay? As a co-author, Darla will be one of the speakers, and we are both, like, just really, really looking forward to seeing you all there. The announcements on how to register are coming out very soon. This is for real. I know I've been saying this for a year and a half. Um, There's been a couple of pivots with COVID. I'll just be serious, okay? Um, But you know that you can be the first to know when the registration is open by getting on the email list, luannlive.com. Com. All right. So um, I just want to say the other thing that I'm doing is I'm getting my business ready now for 2021. I'm clarifying my initiatives. I'm looking at my team and our structure. I'm creating budgets for the things I like, such as marketing. All right. And I'm laying down the line on the hardcore goals I want to reach. All right. This is the time, this fourth quarter. Don't leave it to the end, the end of the year. All right. And of course, I work with my coaches to accomplish this. Eileen Hahn, Amber De La Garza, the VIN man. The VIN man helps me with this too, right? Who helps you? Who helps you do this? In this last year, 
I have had the privilege to work with five amazing business owners as their chairman of the board. It has been an incredible gift for me to sit with these business owners, to look at where they were, to look at where they want to be, to strategize with them the moves that needed to happen, and then to work with them together throughout this last year to get there. And I just want to say, if you think this high-level coaching is for you, right now I'm getting my 2021 calendar together. So um, reserve a spot if you want, because this is limited. I only take you know five or six of these chairman of the boards a year. It's a lot of time. I want to give my A game to any person that's in this this group with me. Okay. And I say group, you're not together. It's separate. It's your own personal one-on-one throughout the year. Okay. But if you're interested, go to luannnigara.com forward slash C-O-B. And Lisa will set up a conversation for you and I so that we can see if it's a right fit for you. And I have to say, there are two spots that are already taken. So I should kind of say that. (laughs) Of the six, there's two that are already taken. So if you want 2021 to be better, bigger, and more satisfying, reach out. Let's see if this is for you. Learn more, go to luannigara.com forward slash C-O-B. All right, so I'm going to see you on social. Who knows? Maybe I'll finally do more video. I don't know. We'll see. (laughs) But either way, I hope what you do, that every day you do it your very best. Decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.